Okay. I'm going to double check. Everybody's here. So um, I would like to begin by wishing you a warm welcome uh, in uh, Maastricht. So welcome to um, the doctoral candidate, um, Xiao Wang, to the members of the degree committee who are with us online. Um, and of course, also to the audience, um, wherever you are uh, in the world, welcome to uh, Maastricht Online. And I hereby open this academic ceremony in which um, Xiao Wang will defend the academic thesis entitled Game Clones and Copyright Infringement, a Comparative Study of Judicial Practices in the US, Japan, and China. Um, may I invite you, dear candidates, to present a summary of your study and the conclusions of your thesis. Um, you now have 15 minutes. You have the floor. Thank you, uh, dear pro-rector, uh, dear members of the Corona, dear family, friends, and audience. In the next 15 minutes, I will shortly introduce my uh, research. And now I will uh, share my screen. So the title of my uh, research is that, and uh, now come to the main body. The research question of my, re uh, this research wants to answer the question that when determining copyright infringement caused by game clones, how should Chinese courts compare with the, ju the legal experiences in the courts of the US and Japan improve their judicial practices uh, when handling the three core issues, uh, including the copyrightability of a video game, the copying of protectable expressions between disputed video games and the applicability of copyright exceptions and limitations. To answer this question, this, uh, this research adopts the doctrinal uh, and the comparative methodologies. Uh, the doctrinal method is, is used to find the law for video games and the comparative method is used to find similarities and differences between different uh, national uh, jurisdictions. So, uh, to answer the question, though, the most important issue is what, uh, what is a game clone in this research? A game clone, in, in a general sense, is, uh, is a video game that looks like an earlier video game. And uh, what does the, fr the phrase looks like means uh, uh, the, what the elements of a video game. The elements of a video game usually have a four uh, from a designer's uh, perspective the mechanics, uh, which means the logical structure of the, of the video game, especially the game rules, and the aesthetics, what, which is presented on the, on the screen uh, as the artistic materials or uh, uh, visual effects. And the third element is story. And the fourth, effect, a fourth element is technology, which uh, include the programs, uh, the computer programs and uh, uh, the any technical uh, technological tools that make all the other three elements uh, possible in a video game. So uh, to understand game clone, we need also introduce another concept, the mode. The mode is the modification of the original game. It must show direct connection with that game. And because of that, it at least the mode will at least take the more, the more visible elements of the original game, such as the artistic materials. But game clone is different from a mode. Game clone is not necessary uh, to show the, the, the direct connection with the original game. And uh, in many cases, the game clone now uh, are intentionally avoid showing the direct connection because uh, that would uh, be considered as a literal copying and uh, the creators of the game clone will uh, avoid the risk of infringement. Uh, besides that, the game clone is actually is in fact a broader concept than mode because uh, in the game clone, we cannot sure, it, it cannot be sure whether uh, this clone has takes uh, the, the, original, the original games and what, or, or what it takes maybe it takes the less visible elements or components of the, of the original game. 
So this research focuses on the game clones that look like an earlier game, but not the ones that can be considered as modes or the literal copying of an earlier game. Uh, that's the core concept of this research. So uh, then comes the problem that uh, whether the game clone, this kind of game clone will constitute copyright infringement. Uh, to decide copyright infringement, there are three core issues. One is whether the cloned video game is protectable under copyright law. And second is whether the, act, the action of cloning infringes copyright. Since copyright is a bund, is, uh, consists of a bundle of exclusive rights, what exclusive rights this action will infringe and how to determine that? And the third core issue is whether the exceptions and limitations of the copyright are uh, applicable to the action of cloning. Uh, when we come to the international treaties, uh, the international treaties does not provide specific answers, clear answers to that. For the first issue, uh, international treaties say yes, but the subject matters is optional because uh, the, the national courts or national legislations can choose how to uh, what subject matters in a video game is pr are protectable. And for the unprotectable contents, the international treaties only provide a principle, the idea expression dichotomy, and uh, provide some uh, specific examples that should be considered as idea. But that is still too uh, abstract to apply practically to uh, specific contents for video games. And uh, for the second issue, the answer is probably. From international treaties, we can find that the most related exclusive right that may relate it to the action of cloning is reproduction right uh, by in the form of copying of protectable expressions. But that is also need to be determined by national courts. There's no clear guidance from the international treaties. And the, for the third issue, it's also left as a national issue because in the Berlin Convention, there are specific cases uh, listed as, uh, as the exceptions and limitations, but it's clearly not applicable to the action of cloning. And uh, uh, for other uh, international treaties like TRIPS or internet uh, treaties, there are three, uh, there is a three step test, but that is still, that is also a principle. And how to apply that principle practically is also left to the left to the national legislation and courts. So we come to that, that if we want to know whether the game clone is a copyright infringement, we need to further explore national legislations and practices. So this research comes to have a comparison between uh, US, Japan, and China. For the first two issues, copyrightability and copying of protectable expressions, we find, we find that uh, there are uh, the specific operations in, this two, in these three countries are different. Japan gives detailed analysis on copyrightability, and, but that analysis also includes the scope of protection for the cloned video game. And the US gives detailed analysis on copying of protectable expressions. And that is very similar to the Japanese analysis of the scope of protection. And for China, it, it's much like a combination of the Japan and US. For the, software, for the video game software, China, Chinese courts do what the US courts do, and uh, like the US courts. And for the video game screen display, Chinese courts, uh, what the Chinese courts do is like the Japanese courts. But uh, although the, the differences are, exi uh, exist, the overall effect is similar. All, this, all the courts in the three countries provide detailed analysis of what can be protected in a video game and the scope of protection for specific content. And for the third issue, the applicability of exceptions and limitations of copyright, uh, for the screen display, all the three countries say no. Uh, and for the, clone, for the cloning action of the video game software uh, in the US, uh, although there's no direct case that uh, says yes for, the, for it, but the a recent case, the, the Google versus Oracle case, uh, from the U.S. Supreme Court, it, it says that for the or, for the for the uh, ordinary program, the fun the functional elements the, uh, such as the APIs can be uh, applicable uh, to uh, as a fair use. But other for the other parts of the of a computer program, all the three country, countries say no. 
So from that comparison, we find a common problem. That is for video game screen display protected as cinematographic work, how to determine copying of protectable expressions between disputed displays. That problem is reflected in two aspects. One is the divergence about the scope of protection for the, for the display. Uh, one is the line between idea and expression. In the US, the US courts uh, consider the game rules described with fairly abstract terms as the idea of a video game. And the, consider other parts beside that as, as expressions. And in, but in Japan, China, there's no such practice. Uh, and the second, uh, overall arrangement, the protection of over, overall arrangement of a display is confirmed uh, by all the three countries. But uh, for the US courts, the degree of protection is not specifically explained. And for Japan, uh, it, explicit, it explicitly denies the protection of style. And for China, in recent case, uh, the Chinese courts uh, hold that specific way of presenting the specific game rules is, protect, is protectable. Uh, so there is divergence about the scope of protection. And the second aspect of the problem is that the comparison by relying on ordinary person's instinct, this practice is problematic. As uh, the problem lies in, lies in that, Without an analytic dissection to set clear targets, it cannot ensure whether the compared contents are protectable expressions or not. So the, the, what, what is compared may not be expressions. So the, the, the result for the comparison is not convincible. So, so uh, this research provides suggestions for the problem. Uh, the main idea of these suggestions is to propose a solution based on the AFC test the abstraction filtration comparison test uh, that is uh, widely used in the, com in the computer programs. So what this test can provide uh, for computer programs by relying on experts, this, this test relies on expert opinions, but also uh, include a judge's uh, decisions. Uh, for the abstraction step, an accurate understanding of the disputed objects is provided. And for the filtration step, a proper scope of protection for a computer program is provided. And for the comparison step, based on the abstraction and filtration steps, protectable expressions act as the benchmark for the comparison. So uh, that ensures the result is convincible and uh, is a convincible legal result. Uh, and why? So next, uh, next we come to why the AFC test is applicable to video game screen display. Uh, as, we, as we mentioned in our last slide, uh, the problem now is the divergence of the scope of protection for the display and the comparison. Uh, and the second problem is the comparison is not uh, made based on protectable expressions. So these tests can solve these problems. They have advantages. And the second, aspect, uh, second reason is the complexity of the display requires uh, experts' opinions. Because the displays is not only computer, not only not only include computer programs. It also uh, is a combination of the artistic materials, artistic uh, effects with the computer programs. So it is more complex, uh, and uh, the experts' opinions can uh, explain more to the judge. And the third reason is that for China, uh, there's a high degree of acceptance for experts' opinions. And the, the experts' opinions have already been used, widely used in, in the uh, computer, not only in the computer program cases, but also the audiovisual work cases. So that's the three problem why the AFC test is applicable to the screen display. So the last question is how to propose a, solu uh, a solution based on the AFC test. Uh, here I provide uh, some uh, specific uh, suggestions. One is the abstraction. Uh, based on the game field theory, I uh, abstract the, the, screen, the screen display into four level hierarchy. And based on this four hierarchy, a four level hierarchy, I filled, I, I filled, I filled out the expression, the, the ideas or the expressions that should not be protected and left, uh, and the left expressions are four kinds, the bones of the display, the skins of the display, the effects which gives the specific impressions of 
uh, an object to the player and the low level rules, which set the specific values describing the nature of the items, characters and emotions in a game. Uh, it is uh, we should be careful that uh, if, the, if those expressions, those four kinds of expressions are limited or dictated by the chosen topics or themes or the functional and technical considerations, they should also be exclusive. We seem to have lost the candidate, so. Uh, yes, that seems to be the case. Uh, that happened uh, also 10 minutes before we started. So I think he will uh, rejoin us uh, quickly. So I think we have a moment uh, to wait. Okay. Is here he comes. He just logged in. Hello. Yes, welcome back. Yes, welcome back. Welcome back, Mr. Wang. And um, do take the time to finalize your conclusions. Okay. Uh, thank you. That is the last. Uh, that's the last uh, slide of my presentation. Uh, the comparison step, and uh, based on the the, the sliding scale uh, sliding scale approach pro uh, put forward by uh, Professor Lamley, I adapted that approach uh, into this uh, into this uh, by considering the level of abstraction and the nature of copying. The judges can. Uh, way the line uh, between infringement and no infringement. And uh, in this, uh, when applying this approach, the, 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 the judge, the court should consider two dimensions. First is the quantitative dimension. That is the substantiality of copying. This is a matter of fact that can heavily rely on experts opinions. And uh, the second dimension is, a qu is, quantit is qualitative. It's, the, it's about the, the legal decision the matter of law decision of the substantial similarity. So uh, by combining these two dimensions, I think the sliding up scale approach can uh, help the judge to make a convincible uh, comparison for uh, uh, from a legal perspective. And thank you for your attention. And uh, now it's time for me to uh, turn back the floor to the pro uh, rector. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you for your presentation. Now, the opposition will now be opened by uh, Professor Heath. Uh, professor Heath is um, the uh, professor of IP law at this university, and he's also the chair of the assessment committee. Professor Heath, you have the floor. Thank you. Esteemed candidate, first of all, let me congratulate you on your academic achievement. Um, we are all in receipt of your thesis. It is in front of us. It has been unanimously approved. And if I may say so, that um, when looking at uh, the first draft I was given of your thesis until the final result, I think you have made um, major progress and improvements. And I think um, the committee um, has been um, sort of very appreciative of the legal comparison you have made between different countries and also in relation to international law. Now, esteemed candidate, allow me to ask you an issue 
that, in my view, has not been addressed in your thesis. And that relates to a Japanese case that you have referred to in your thesis. It is called Tokimeki Memorial. Of course, you're aware of this case. And indeed, the case and uh, the issue that was um, the, the issue that was litigated was very entertaining because the video game in question um, concerned a high school boy who, by skillfully playing, um, would then, if successful, um, be in position um, to propose to his uh, high school sweetheart, or rather she would propose to him or she would agree to marry him because of the qualities uh, that um, he showed or that, that he obtained in the course of this game. And um, the infringement concerned what I would call a, a, a turbo character. In other words, instead of having to go um, through hours and hours of uh, playing and sort of gaining points, um, the little turbo would allow almost anyone to win this game, right? And um, so the issue was both a, an infringement sort of of uh, the economic rights, but it was also an infringement of moral rights. And I felt that in your whole thesis, you have not addressed the issue of a possible moral rights infringement by copying game clones. And I would like to ask you um, what your opinion is on, on this point, given that this issue was perhaps the most discussed in connection with the Tokimeki Memorial case. Thank you for the question uh, from the highly esteemed opponent. Um, in my opinion, that uh, your question means that why I should uh, not, uh, why I do not uh, handle the moral right issue in my thesis. Uh, that uh, the reason is that since I uh, this, that is decided by the structure of my of my thesis because uh, I start from the analysis of how the International, how the international treaties handle those three core issues. But when, when the exclusive rights, of course, the exclusive rights include moral rights, but uh, from international treaties, uh, the, the moral rights uh, generally, especially in the Berlin Convention, it, it's mainly concerned the, nat the, nat the natural, natural person, but not legal person. So, uh, well, in nowadays uh, video game industry, the creators or the right holders of, of video games are usually uh, uh, legal persons. So uh, that although there are definitely be some uh, nat uh, national creators, national person creators, uh, but uh, that, is not, that is very rare, especially for the uh, high quality games. So uh, in that sense, I just uh, ignored that and uh, passed, passed that issue uh, yeah, from because of the structure. And besides that, uh, I know all moral rights is also a very compl complicated issue. So uh, in order to, and uh, uh, for also for the comparison, uh, the US courts, uh, in, the, in the US cases, there's uh, real issues related to moral rights. There are many, there, I, I, I find many cases in the US, in the US case law, but uh, it's very rare. And that is also the case in, in China. Uh, although China is also uh, is a, is a author's, rights, author's rights tradition. Mm. So uh, for the structure of the thesis and for the, uh, uh, in order to facilitate uh, for more in-depth comparison, I uh, intentionally ignore the, the, the moral rights issue about this uh, 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 related to the uh, clone games. So maybe I, uh, I can handle that issue in the future. 
because it's also a very complicated issues in both uh, Japan and China. That's my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Professor uh, Heath is satisfied with the answer for the moment. Well, for, for, for the moment I am, I have noted the candidate's promise to address this issue in the future. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, the opposition will now be continued by Professor Van Engelen. Professor Van Engelen is Professor of IP Law at this university and a member of the Assessment Committee. Professor Van Engelen. Thank you. Um, well, dear candidate, uh, congratulations on the uh, result of your studies. It's an impressive uh, hard copy book about interactive uh, video games. Um, my question concerns what you describe on page 29 in the book, paragraph 23112, where you address the issue of how to classify a video game from a copyright perspective. And you indicate that you have this distributive classification which means that you sort of treat it as two works that happen to be, uh, to live together, uh, or you can uh, address them as one multi multimedia work. Um, apparently you're not very impressed about the benefits that may come with the latter qualification, uh, but the way you dismiss that is not convincing to me uh, at this point in time. You refer to a multimedia definition, which I, if I'm correct, is not given in any of the treaties. So it's more of a scholarly development. And you say multimedia work is defined as a work which combines more than one different kind of expression in an integrated digital format on a single medium, and which allow their users with the aid of a software tool to manipulate the contents of the work with a substantial degree of interactivity. And then you state that that definition does not fit to video games. Uh, you say uh, with regard to the distinguishing uh, that it's either impossible or makes no sense. And you also mention that in the way I understand it, if people try to clarify the definition, there is talk about the interactivity allowing the user even to morph certain aspects of the game or the display. But since that's only, it's not in the definition itself, but it's an explanation of that definition, the fact that the user cannot morph part of the game is not very convincing, I think, to, to say, okay, it doesn't fit this definition. So your conclusion that the definition does not fit, um, if you can clarify perhaps on that, that would be helpful. Having said that, I think the more important point is that you don't see uh, any, bad, uh, any benefit in using that uh, definition. My thoughts there is that if you use it, if you, address a video game as two works, the display and the computer program uh, running it, then you run the risk that they may start living separate lives, and et cetera. While I also have the impression that, the, yes, there is a computer work here, but the work does not live in a vacuum. It's only there to make the game happen. And my fear is that if you sort of keep treating them as two different kinds of works, that we may end up in all kinds of situations where we have unpleasant surprises. Don't ask me, but I have the benefit that I'm the one that can ask the questions, but I don't have any clear example of where that may go wrong. But for instance, if you look at any possible exceptions that may apply, dealing with it as an integrated work may be helpful. And another example that comes to mind to me is that if you look at industrial design, that also treat it as a separate class of works with the benefit, for instance, that the, the period of time that you protect the work can be played with. So I'm not convinced by your analysis that it's not possible to use that definition, but I'm also worried that 
without that debt or that to my question is don't you see any added value by being able to use the definition so that you have a holistic kind of treatment of a video game instead of lawyers pulling it apart in all kinds of elements and run away with that. Uh, thank you for the question from the highly esteemed uh, opponent. Uh, if I'm understand right, uh, your question is that uh, you are not agree with the uh, the normative uh, conclusion that the, the the video games should be protected separately as different works. And uh, uh, of course, I understand your concern because, uh, in my opinion, there there are indeed some benefits to protect uh, video games as a whole. And in China. Uh, uh, several several years ago, there are there there are a uh, heat discussion about this. And uh, uh, if you put if you put video games together, uh, indeed you will uh, uh, um, in theory you may get lower transaction costs uh, and uh, or license fees for uh, each parts of the of these separate parts maybe. But uh, the reality of this of the video game industry is that uh, usually the the uh, there are three kinds of uh, legal persons in that in that market. Uh, the third party, the third party uh, legal uh, persons, is only only occupy a, a very rare part of the market uh, of the video game companies uh, as the as the right holders. Most of the of the of the companies are uh, publishers and uh, the creators. And these uh, right holders, they will hire the uh, somebody, hire some 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 companies, some studios to 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 create the images, to create the music, and then they get to bring them together into a into a uh, into a, a, a video game, a, a integrated video game. So they between them, they are a contract of, uh, contract to combine them. They are contract. Uh, obligations so uh, that may reduce the transaction costs because the uh, when we buy or when other people want to get a license from uh, for some uh, for some music for or for some images they will come to directly to the right holder of the of the uh, of the right holder of the of the video game just one video game they were not uh, separately uh, separate use too many uh, like uh, holders to 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 bring licenses to that so i think the uh, the reduction of the uh, of the transaction cost to to protect them uh, as a as a one as an integrated work uh, the uh, the benefit is not so obvious than uh, than to bring them together and besides that in china now the the video games the video uh, the game companies are more uh, and besides that uh, if you if you protect them separately, you will get more. Uh, the the right holders will get more benefits and get more incentives to create to make the to make their music better, to hire better uh, studios to create images or uh, uh, game rules or something like that. So I think uh, to protect to protect them separately will provide uh, greater incentives to the to the creators or the right holders than to put them separately. But uh, I understand your concern. And uh, in China, recently in China, there are indeed some, some scholars uh, in private, they discuss whether we can protect the uh, video game as a whole. Uh, is the uh, ho holistically protection uh, worth a second thought? That's indeed uh, an issue that worth further discussion. But uh, I think considering the reality of, the, of nowadays, uh, the, the industrial structure, and I think, uh, uh, that that and also and also there are also uh, legis legislative uh, costs and other uh, transaction administrative costs to if we want to uh, build or uh, regulate or create a regulation uh, as uh, for for the video game to protect it as a whole. Uh, multimedia work is just a is just a try. Uh, in my opinion, uh, that try is not so. Is not is not a successful one, but maybe future there 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 may be one. But uh, I think the the benefit is not obvious. So um, that's my opinion. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, the opposition will now be continued by Professor Chin Zhang He. Um, he is member of the assessment committee. He is also assistant professor of intellectual property law at City University of Hong Kong. Thank you, Proactive, for your kind introduction. And uh, thanks for the esteemed candidate for uh, writing an assessment book, which I read it uh, with great interest because as you may know, I have uh, um, accidentally write an article on games recently that is published in Guru Int. So I, I do have a lot of interest in this topic. And I can see that you have put a lot of uh, efforts in uh, investigating um, this complicated issue because it was uh, actually a big problem in China because uh, gaming industry in China is a, it's a very hot, hot topic, not just because it involves heavy investment, but also um, games are very unique um, category uh, as uh, I have observed in the previous question as well. Uh, you can see that is a highly debated issue. Um, but my question will be focusing on also related to the previous question, but more about um, the conclusion and the solutions that you proposed in your essay, right? Because we know that you write a book about um, the judicial decisions and the solutions proposed for the courts to solve um, the game clone issues in China. Uh, whereas my question, the first question is that, do you think that your proposal is universal, applicable? For example, that does it have any problems when cross uh, 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 you know, jurisdictions? For example, can it be applied in a US court or can it be applied in, in, in the EU court? That is a simple question. Um, the, the, the next question goes to is um, applicability in terms of future developments, because um, as we know, games are like a movie uh, that, that has been debated in the previous um, years. We all know this, that, but uh, it is not like a movie because uh, we know that um, the early games like Treatise, you know, or like, you know, uh, Super Mario, the kind of games, but now we move on to uh, MNORPG games and even more uh, complicated games like sandbox games. And now we are entering into um, what we call the metaverse version of games. So do you think that your conclusion will still apply in the future? And for how many years do you think that, you know, your conclusion or your proposal will still work in a future scenario like a metaverse games. Do you think that is an issue uh, that the courts will still have to deal with heavily? Or do you think that, you know, technology will also provide another solution that can erase the problem? So that's my question. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the, uh, for the question from uh, the highly esteemed opponent. Um, there are two questions. First is whether the uh, my solution is universal is is universal, especially for the U.S. courts. Uh, and the second question is whether uh, my solution is applicable to the future or the future perspective of my solutions. Uh, for the first question, I think um, the answer probably is no, because uh, the U.S. the U.S. Uh, jurisdictions uh, it has a very different uh, jury system. Uh, from China and Japan, and uh, uh, in this in this research, uh, my opinion from the from the research question that is how to improve the Chinese operations or the Chinese uh, practice ju ju juris uh, jurisdictional uh, pra uh, practices to 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 uh, confirm copyright infringement. So uh, my start point is how to improve the Chinese the Chinese situations. Uh, so that may may not be so uh, universal. And uh, when I considering whether the the experts' opinions is acceptable uh, in in China, uh, since China has a very high degree of accept acceptance of experts' opinions than U.S. and uh, Japan, as I as I think, uh, that is uh, may maybe the the technological tools or these experts' opinions are more welcomed in China. 
but not uh, in, in in at least the U.S. I think, and because uh, U.S. this their jewelry their their jewelry system decides that they relies more on the uh, people's rationality. They consider that rationality, people's rationality, or ordinary people's rationality is more important. And many people are afraid of the uh, afraid of the effects uh, from the technology. Uh, they are they, they are they are afraid of the risk of the technology, or, no matter the AI or some uh, computer programs in in there many years ago. So I I think uh, that the accepted the 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 degree of acceptance in U.S. is not very uh, what will be will be lower than in China. Uh, to be honest, uh, and for the second question is uh, in the future the the future perspective of my. Uh, Solution. I think uh, the AI, uh, the VR, uh, AR games. The uh, I think in the future, these games. The the, the main issues about it is that I think, in my opinion, is that uh, how the algorithm created contents should be should be protected. It is not about uh, how these uh, contents are finally presented. It is about who should be the right holder of that of those contents. So, uh, in my opinion, my my solutions is mainly concern how to discern two different contents. Is it is it is guided by results. It is not it, it does it. It is another issue that who will own this algorithm created algorithmic created uh, contents. But nowadays, these new forms of video games are always concerned uh, th these parts. The subject of the, the right holders of the of those of those games, but if you see the forms or the final results of this of these games, they are still uh, the, the 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 experience. And in my opinion, the, the experience provided to the players. In my opinion, since the the essence of a vi of a video game or any game is provide experience to its players, if that definition or that concept of a game is not changed. Uh, my the 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 finding of this research the solutions to discern how these two uh, video games are similar or not will not be outdated, because uh, uh, this those contents are still uh, results of the creation. So uh, so I think nowadays the, uh, the 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 most important issue or the uh, the most heated discussed issue today is uh, whether. Uh, the, the contents created by AI or uh, created by some al algorithmic uh, thing uh, can be protected or how can it be protected by copyright law or other laws or, uh, or related data about that, about, the, about, those, about those things. It's not about the result of the contents of the game. So I think my, uh, my, my solution will, or, or my research uh, in the thesis will not be outdated. In a, in a very long time, I think, if uh, that it may be, it may be outdated when the the game, the definition of game, or the or the people's uh, 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 people how people think what a game is, this thing changed. Then uh, maybe I think my thesis will be outdated. Thank you. Thank you, and I see Professor He nodding. Um, so we will continue now the opposition with Professor Moorland. Um, she is a member of the assessment committee and she's also an associate professor of IP law at this university. Dr. Moorland, you have the floor. Correct, well, many thanks for uh, the kind introduction. Uh, dear candidate, uh, it has been a pleasure reading your uh, book. I felt it was very well written and also very well structured and that coming from a German obviously is a compliment. Uh, and it helped me really to, um, yeah, to disangle all the different elements in a game and, and, and follow your analysis uh, pretty smoothly. So, so compliments for this. Um, my question pertains to an issue you have also mentioned in your presentation, namely one of the problems that you encountered uh, that all three jurisdictions actually have, and that pertains to the substantial similarity test uh, for uh, establishing copyright infringement. 
And basically, the choice jurisdictions have is to either consider an ordinary person's overall perception to determine this, or as you propose, uh, to rely on expert opinions. And I understand that the jurisdiction who have analyzed uh, actually currently use the ordinary person's overall perception, but you propose that this should be changed. My question is a methodological one. Um, you suggest that you have used the functional comparative method or micro uh, comparison, as you call it, um, to provide suggestions or solutions to this to a problem, right? Uh, the, this, this method really says uh, when looking at the experiences of different uh, jurisdictions, there may be uh, similarities and differences with the solutions they have chosen and then by comparing them one could actually show which of these solutions could be suited in another environment in your case china but here comes my question you analyze that all jurisdictions have found the same solution namely an ordinary person's um, perception to establish this now you say we should all choose a different factor. But of course, this method of comparisons didn't give you that idea because none of the other jurisdictions is doing this so far, at least if I understand correctly. So my question now is, where does, which method have you used to uh, provide the suggestion of using expert opinions if none of the jurisdictions has so far done this? Thank you very much. I hope um, you can answer the question. Uh, thank you for the question from the highly uh, esteemed opponent. Uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, you say that uh, the methodology. Uh, actually, I come from this. I come from this uh, in the analysis of the uh, American scholars, uh, U the U.S. scholars' uh, opinions. When uh, indeed I find that uh, all the three countries, they 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 in fact rely rely on ordinary people's uh, rationality to find uh, the differences. Uh, no matter what, what the name it, it calls, uh, in Chinese and the Japanese course, they may, they may it, it, is, it is in fact the, the judge's uh, opinion, but it says, oh, from the, from the ordinary people's perspective. But in, 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 the, in the US, it is maybe indeed the, the, the jury's opinions, the ordinary people's opinions. So uh, in fact, there is, there's only in the US course who apply the, 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 the really, the real ordinary people's opinions. But in Japan and China, there, there is, it is in fact the judge's opinions. So uh, where do I come from this? Uh, this is actually a normative issue, but not come from the comparison because uh, that, that normative issue is put forward by the US court, by the US scholars in China and Japan, uh, surprisingly, there's no too not too much discussion about that. But uh, but there's a background uh, about the about the reliance on ordinary people's uh, ordinary people's rationality because uh, in uh, in the past the mainly uh, disputes on works are not computer programs. The computer programs, as we know, is a functional works, and uh, with high uh, technological uh, nation. But other works like artistic, uh, artistic works or music or something like that, it is, uh, I think the people's, uh, ordinary people's uh, national, uh, rationality is enough to handle that. But now, since th these things are too complicated, uh, the computer program is, compl is complicated enough, but then it, the, the screen display is actually more complicated than that because it also combines the, the artistic uh, the artistic aspects uh, with the, the technical aspects, the, the functional nature of the computer programs. So I think the ordinary people's uh, rationality is not enough to handle this. So I turn to the uh, uh, maybe a normative conclusion that we should rely on, on, on the uh, experts' opinions. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that conclusion uh, comes from uh, Descriptive compar comparison of this of these jurisdictions. So that's maybe some some kind of odd, but uh, I want to 
I want to uh, defend that um, because nowadays the Chinese uh, has a has a rather high acceptance degree for the technical solutions. And oh, I think the most important reason for that is uh, when the compa the comparison actually is uh, by nature it it is a combination of uh, both uh, technical uh, factual perspective and the legal perspective. Because the how the fact is, is decided or understood by the judges will definitely lead to the final decision, their legal decision. So we cannot divide this to divide this as two uh, uh, as two uh, independent uh, factors. They in fact they affect each other, and they maybe they even decide each other. So in my opinion, that. Uh, in my opinion, I, I'm not I'm not proposed that the expert opinions should definitely uh, replace all the the the, the, the status or all, all the occupations, the the shares in, in the decision of the of the of the legal issue. That is not possible, right? So we need to what what I propose is to uh, when when come to the fact fact of match, the matter of fact, uh, we need to rely more on expert opinions. And the expert opinions will definitely aspect judges' decisions. In that, so in that sense, I think uh, I come to the conclusion that the, uh, the comparison should rely on both the expert's opinions and the judges' opinions. What I want to, uh, what I oppose is that nowadays, the judges, they, uh, Claim that they 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 they, f they are from the uh, ordinary people's perspective, but they are actually judges' opinions. So that's that's the uh, the the, the in, in, in in parallel situation. I, I this is the what I want to oppose. So I put forward these solutions to to solve that. Thank you. Thank you, and I see Dr. Moulin nodding. So um, the opposition will now be continued by Professor Kong Jong Liu, um, who is uh, a member of the assessment committee, and he is also the Lee Kong Chian Professor at um, SMU, Singapore Management University. So allow me to welcome you very warmly um, here in Maastricht, um, Professor Liu, and you have the floor. Okay, so uh, many thanks for your kind introductions. And um, a dear uh, a candidate, I'm very much uh, impressed by the comprehensiveness and the width and, and, and the depth of your uh, thesis. So you have my uh, congratulations on your academic achievement. So since I'm the last one to ask the question, I'd like to ask you a bigger question that will bring you out of the realm of uh, copyright. So perhaps it's best that we can draw some analogies from different areas of IP rather than just looking at uh, copyright uh, uh, in silo so that you can have this uh, comprehensive understanding of IP laws. So uh, uh, you must uh, be aware of Article 31 of the TRIPS agreement that deal with issues of uh, compulsory uh, patent license, okay? And there is this uh, a situation where you find uh, dependent patents that is based on a previous patent to solve the, that issues of possible uh, refusal to license that will then only bring to a gridlock or deadlock, so to, if you will, between the, the, the first inventor and the second inventor. So there is this possibility for the second uh, patentee to ask for a compulsory patent license and then vice versa. So I just wonder, uh, what is then your view on, 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 on is, is there uh, any possibility that we can uh, draw some lessons or learn something from Article 31, this kind of compulsory licensing of perhaps the copyright, rather than that we just try to uh, uh, find this the yes and no kind of uh, thing or infringement or, or, or non-infringement thing, but rather perhaps that we can go uh, forward together that by uh, allowing uh, some kind of compulsory uh, uh, license on a uh, copyrighted uh, game so that uh, the first original uh, game copyright owner, he can be or she can be compensated 
uh, one way or the other, rather than a zero sum game between the two uh, uh, copyright owners. That is my question. Thank you. Thank you for the question from the highly esteemed opponent. Uh, in my opinion, you are asking that uh, whether the uh, the the uh, the the clone games, if not uh, infringement or some some kind of infringement, can uh, get a compulsory license from from its uh, from its uh, the, the the right holders of the original uh, of the original game. In my opinion, that in theory, I think that that may be possible, because that uh, that reminds me of. Uh, of the Professor uh, He Ting Xiang's uh, uh, article that the fun activities, the fun activities may be uh, something like that because uh, the the right holders may be tolerated, uh, the the, the follow-up creators to use these things, but uh, just to pay some pay some uh, uh, decent uh, fees to to that. So uh, in theory, I think that may be possible, and that is. Uh, uh, um, that is possible, but uh, if you see from the Chinese uh, copyright law, as I know, uh, the compulsory license should be uh, regulated uh, explicitly by the legislature in the law, and uh, the price of the of the uh, compulsory license should be uh, most of that should be decided by the by the legislator, or uh, from uh, or by the government through the. Uh, through the market uh, behaviors, the, the general market behaviors. But I think that the reality, uh, when considering this reality, uh, I think that uh, uh, bring that into today's Chinese, Chinese copyright law, uh, maybe not possible, but I think that uh, in theory, that is still possible. And uh, in China, and I think, uh, since the, the competition between different game companies are, are really, uh, um, fears. I think they they will not tolerate other person to 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 uh, even fans to use their to use their works. So that the degree of their toleration is very low. So uh, and that reminds me the 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 webcasting of video games is also a, an issue of uh, of uh, related to video game in today's China in today's China. And many video games, video game company, they even not allow the fans, their fans or the hosters to, to webcasting, to webcast their video games. But that may be uh, it, some, to some degree uh, uh, belong to the fan activities or may, may have uh, bring better incentives or better uh, uh, advertisements for their, for their games, but they, they, they say no. So I think uh, considering the reality and the current situation of China, I think it may be not uh, uh, possible in China now. Thank you. And is Professor Liu satisfied with the answer? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Then the opposition will be continued by uh, Dr. Moorland for a second round of questions. Indeed, uh, dear candidates, I have the pleasure to ask you another question, which I think is rather pertinent. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that you are defending this uh, thesis, uh, obviously in uh, Maastricht, at least virtually, uh, at our Maastricht University. Uh, but I really missed any um, comparison or analysis, or at least some allusions to the European Union uh, framework, uh, because the games, obviously, uh, these questions are highly relevant here as well. And uh, with our system, it's also rather complicated, I understand, um, uh, to classify the games, but also to find substantial similarities. So uh, I would like to know why you didn't choose the European Union system um, first, but second, uh, as well, to invite you now here uh, to um, shed some light on uh, particular differences that you may find or may have encountered uh, that are different from the other uh, jurisdictions that you have analyzed. And again, I would be interested to hear from you whether you think European courts would be inclined to accept expert opinions for the finding of substantial similarity uh, for copyright infringement in, in, the, in the cases of games as you suggest. Thank you. 
thank you for a question from the uh, highly esteemed uh, opponent. Now, in my opinion that uh, indeed, I, uh, in the earlier stage of my research, I want to uh, handle the EU issue, uh, the EU approach about the video games. But then uh, I'm confused because uh, there are two difficulties for me to do that research. Uh, one is on the EU level, as we know, the Nova case is a landmarking case about the video game. Uh, and it, it provided some guidelines to, uh, for the video games, for how the, the European, the, on the European level, the European courts will handle the, uh, copyright, is uh, the copyright issues regarding video games. <coughs> but then uh, but, uh, there's no... Olga asked... Um, you may briefly um, continue your answer. And finalize. Okay, so I think that's that's maybe the uh, on the EU level the cases uh, maybe rare and hard to find than uh, than the uh, Japanese and the U.S. cases. And on the uh, second reason is that uh, for the for the member state level, I think uh, the the Germany the the Germany have many ha has many cases about video games as I know and uh, also about the computer programs. So I think that may be uh, a good resource, but. The language is a problem. So uh, maybe in the future, I have more time to uh, to to make some uh, more in-depth research about the EU level and on the uh, Germany uh, jurisdiction. I think. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang. The time appointed for defending your thesis has now passed and the degree committee will withdraw to discuss the quality of your thesis and of your defense. I request that you and your company await the results of our deliberations and our return.
Okay, welcome back. Um, Mr. Wang, the degree committee here present online has assessed the quality of your thesis and of your defense. And in view of its positive verdict and taking into, taking into account your previous qualifications, the degree committee has decided to grant you the degree of doctor. Dr. Tiagi is authorized to confer upon you this academic distinction in accordance with Dutch university custom. I invite your supervisor to now take the floor. Uh, thank you so much. Um, do you promise to work in accordance with the principles of scientific integrity at all times to be careful and honest, transparent, independent and responsible? Dr. Wang? Sorry, uh, my internet has some problem. Can you? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, shall I repeat? Uh, okay. Do you promise to work? Do you promise to work in accordance with the principles of scientific integrity at all times to be careful and honest, transparent, independent, and responsible? Yes, I promise. By the authority vested in us by law and in conformity with the decision of the committee here present online, I hereby confer upon you, Zhao Wang, the degree of doctor and grant you all rights attached by custom and law. As evidence of this, you'll soon receive the degree certificate signed by the rector, the secretary, and the supervisor affixed with the official seal of the university shown by the beetle. Thank you. Yes, your supervisor, um, Professor Kamperman Sanders now has the floor. Yeah. Dr. Wang, congratulations on this wonderful achievement. You must be so relieved to finally have concluded your work on a thesis to which you have dedicated so much effort. When I first read your early proposals, I was not quite clear on what to expect. And even now I feel that the thesis is a bit like the Star Wars prequel the attack of the clothes. It resides between the phantom menace of large scale copyright infringement and the revenge of the Sith, who we now realize is the copyright owner, or is it the metaverse? We will find out in future. All the while though, and you have experiences today, the audience is left wondering where the Mandalorian is, EU law, for example. But just like the current reappreciation of the CGI enhanced prequels of the Star Wars classics, it is also clear that Obi-Wan Kenobi is just over the horizon and that your scientific career is only about to start in earnest now that the clones have been defeated. Dear Xie, I also remember your first and second trip that you took to the annual IP events in Macau mm -hmm. that I've had the privilege to organize with Professor Heath here present for over 20 years now. During your first trip, you disappeared from the sessions as soon as the copyright sessions had ended. <laughs> And when asked, you said that you were, after all, a copyright scholar and had no affinity with other branches of IP. Imagine, therefore, my surprise when you asked me some years later whether you could attend the Macau program again. I was hesitant, even a bit suspicious. Would Cher disappear again? 
Should I perhaps protect him from the lure of the Macau casinos and refuse your re-entry into the program? But no. Che convincingly argued that he now was ready to expand his horizon and that the attendance of the Macau program was surely the quickest way to IP enlightenment. So, Professor Heath and I um, made you work hard on all that was not copyright related. And you stepped up to the challenge with a zeal that truly impressed us. It was a textbook audition for a role in a classic. And that now you have found as a part to play at Tsinghua University, covering all the fields of IP, I hope. And where I wish that you will find a place, and I wish you the best of luck in your career, not just as a copyright scholar, but as a full IP scholar. So true to the start of the expose, I say, may the force be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Dear Dr. Wang, um, now allow me also to congratulate you on uh, the honor that you have now acquired. It is the highest distinction that we have available in this um, university. And I do so also on behalf of our Dean who could not be present here. Um, he's in the degree ceremonies for the masters, um, but also on behalf of the board of uh, the deans of the other faculties of this university. Um, and with this, I declare the uh, ceremony to be ended. Thank you and have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Thank you, professors. Thank you so much. Yes. Also for my side, Xiao, well done. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe and the, other members, the, the other members of the degree committee, you have the floor now to address the candidate, oh, the, the candidate, the doctor, <laughs> if you so wish. Yes, Dr. Wang, um, I can sort of elaborate a bit on what uh, Professor Kampaman Sanders said. If you're an IP professor, you need to deal with all IP. And I uh, sort of also in view of your position now, I'm very glad that back in Macau, uh, we made you work on patents and trademarks. And I'm very sure that this will be beneficial to your work as a professor to which I would like to wish you every success. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Uh, congratulations also from, uh, from me. Uh, it certainly was an impressive book. We also learned that uh, you got the degree by uh, the principal, less is more. You were 